Hi, I'm Guo Zhongxin, Uncle Rocket. I'm here to talk to you about Taiwan's communication resilience. Where war might break out next? Taiwan. 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 Taiwan's internet is vulnerable to Boats attack. Damaged undersea internet cables between Taiwan and Mazu Island. Ukraine war started more than two years ago. I think everybody knows Ukraine going to be locked down without, I think, the help of starting at that time. Most countries rely on the internet connection throughout the world through the underwater cables. We do have uh, more than 16 underwater cables connected to different continents. More than 95%, probably 98, are caught on this high speed, high throughput underwater cables. If this cable being destroyed by natural force or some other vicious force, then what can you do to communicate him with others? Roughly back to one year or half years ago, you know, in Kimmen and Mazu, there's an under cable used for communication for internet were cut off, interrupt the internet connection for almost three months. Right, Taiwan and China, tensions continue to simmer, this time over the damage done to an undersea internet cable. Tracking data revealed that the freighter likely dragged its anchor in the area where the cable was cut. Taiwan is also looking to create a backup with this. Low Earth orbit satellite systems like SpaceX's Starlink can provide internet access without any physical connections over land or sea. The only way to maintain communication resilience is through space. In space, we do have a different kind of resources, like uh, you have a geosynchronized satellite, you have so-called MIO, you have also, I think recently, a very hot topic, neo communication satellites. We can call it multi-orbit solution. We used only to have a geo, but geo, you know, is 36,000 kilometers from Earth. For example, you send one signal from the Earth service going up to the satellite, and then coming down 72,000 kilometers. The propagation speed at this point 24 seconds, not to mention the electronic latency. Then the only way is the deal. It's roughly 500 or 600 kilometers from Earth. With that, the country can maintain some system very similar to the internet connection, just like an uh, underwater cable. That's very important especially for urgent time. If you like a video, please like, subscribe, and leave your comment below. As a matter of fact, you enjoy satellite technology every day. For example, like a GPS, the weather prediction report. Without GPS receiver, there's no Google map. You cannot have an Uber taxi. You want to go to Thailand, you need to know what's the weather there. Back in April, because earthquake, you have a landslide. Formosa 5 is our own satellite. And we took a picture, processed the image within three hours, so, so we can know immediately where is the landslide, we can calculate. Formosa 2 have rescued more than uh, 3,000 people in Wenchuan. And also the Formosa 7 is a collaboration project between Taiwan and US. They improve the weather forecast globally 5 to 10%. And the data provided to Taiwan within 30 to 45 minutes to our central bureau agency. Every three hours, you are enjoy the benefit of the data from the Formosa 7. For national defense or national security, the Taiwan Strait now, there are more than close to 2,000 ships. If you do not have the optical remote signal star system, you never know which ship is China's or Taiwan's or where it's going to go. With satellite, it can do a lot for our living you know, Earth's going to be destructive, you know, the sun going to go away. You need to all count on space. We all welcome all kinds of different kinds of commercial resources. First one, of course, is starting. They already have about 4 million customers now. The other one, I think, is uh, Amazon, Kuiper Amazon. Canadian satellite set, they will send roughly 200 deal satellite. The company I just mentioned, they are all commercial. It's not so reliable as government to government or even government to government can break the rule. So we need to have multiple resources. 
either build or with some other approaches to have this capability. So that's our strategy. Yeah, I think Taiwan is uh, in a very, very good position to cut in the global supply chain and play a very, very important role because Taiwan is well known and very dominant in the so-called semiconductor related industry like uh, IC design and semiconductor fabrication. And all this can be used either directly or modified for the space environment on board in satellite. And also Taiwan is very, very well known for mass production. For example, through the industrial 4.0, you can automate the assembly, automate the end-to-end -end electrical functional test. This is what Taiwan is very, very good. So I'm looking forward to having this happen in Taiwan. Oh. I guess it's a communication satellite. I guess it's starting. There's a two antenna, right? It's a mechanical antenna for the ground gateway communication. But the other long, I think the face array for user terminal communication. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Hubble, I guess. They stand it up to roughly 400 kilometers to watch the universe. It was launched in 1991. The image blur and was fixed in 1993 by sending external up there to edit another mural. Since then, it's been there more than 30 years. Yeah. Hey, Chidip. This is my I really don't know. Like a monster. It's not International Space Station. There are two hinges supposed to be space. I really don't know. Oh, gee. <laughs> Star Wars, that's why I don't know. Because when I was a kid, we do not have television. Because I was trying to learn English. I watched some of them and then I did learn something from that. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's a Tassas, etc. <laughs> I look at the satellite almost not every day, but it's, it is every week. We have a lot of review meeting, so it should be for Mosa 8. I think so, right. This is the bus and the payload is the telescope. You just imagine you put a big camera up there and looking down. This one is going to look down on the surface. We have a reaction wheel inside. If you want to take a picture to some other area, you can turn and change your direction. So you know how challenging it is to make sure it can function as design. We're going to launch the first one in the fourth quarter 2025 next year. I think there are two faults for the space technology, for example, like a satellite. Sending one geoset into orbit is roughly 400 million US dollars, so it's so expensive. But starting around 20 years ago, there's a so-called new space. Want to deploy the DEO communication satellite in the low Earth orbit. The environment is not as harsh as geoset, so it becomes much easier, much cheaper to send a satellite into orbit. When it's cheaper and the launch cost is cheaper, a lot of people, including the small company, can utilize something like a study. They want to deploy more than 1,000 or even 10,000. They need to have a mass production capability. Taiwan is very strong in semiconductor. All this stuff will be made in Taiwan in a large quantity. Even now, you cannot make a lot of revenue. But you look back another 10 years, the scenario will be different. Yeah, I think this happened uh, 2023. TASA was invited for the first time to attend this uh, space symposium. It's uh, more than 40 countries, more than 10,000 people attended. Our investment is quite less as compared with others. The biggest one, of course, is US. For NASA, more than 20 billion US dollars every year. Another space force this year, 50 billion US dollars. In Japan, they have a four to five billion US dollars every year. Korea, 700 million US dollars. Our budget roughly is three or five times less, but we can do a lot of stuff. We are performing the surface national space program starting from 2019. And in this program, we do have a optical remote sensing. 
you just think about you bring up a big camera and take picture to the ground. The other one is the so-called synthetic aperture radar. You use a microwave so you can take a picture without light. We're going to implement more than 10 in total until 2031. So we're going to have a small constellation. We can visit Taiwan or somewhere we want to visit. The other one is so-called B5G. Beyond 5G is an experimental communication satellite. It's similar to what Starlink or Kuiper is developing. We're going to send it up in 2027. We need to build the multi-orbit solution to make sure we have the communication resistance whenever it's needed. Oh yeah, because uh, they have uh, deployed quite a lot of remote sensing satellite, close to 300 to 400 watts. In addition to that, they have a signal. They can take an electronic signature, so they can detect what Taiwan's military is doing. They put in at least 10 billion US dollars, I guess more than 60 or 70 years without any interruption. They are superpower next to US in terms of space technology, without any doubt. In addition to our own effort to advance our technology, we need to understand more what China is doing. I think the history of space exploration is inseparable from politics. What do you think? Absolutely. Politics affects every aspect of our lives, in particular, Taiwan's security resilience. If you like a video, please like, subscribe, and leave your comment below.